darkness of shame you have wrapped yourself in there is hope for a tree that is cut down because at the scent of water it shall spring back to life somebody sent me a chat on whatsapp i said i have some friends that or some some young people i'm, I'm mentoring and they are all on fire for god but they are you know struggling with immorality and so i i didn't know what to reply that message because it shows you how far down the baton has fallen as far as the faith yes or no our definitions are all crooked everything is all funny i looked at the statement they are on fire but in immorality i was confused i said tell this to paul tell this to james tell this to john tell this to tell this to the saints that we read about tell this even to your angels that you are on fire but you are in you know it's a confusing statement in heaven but it's very acceptable on earth yes or no it's actually on fire but it's in immorality and so i said my dear brother the two things you said don't go together you can't be on fire and still be struggling with immorality and i'll show you how how actually that is possible because fire is in levels is in degrees hallelujah I don't want us to waste time tonight. One of the ways we get the fire up is through prayers. And so if you don't pray this night, there's nothing I can really do about it. <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it. I learned a long time ago that it's not a hand laid on you that's going to bring you to your destiny. You must like prayer. Because prayer is fire. Remember, the presence of God is the presence of the consuming fire. And that's where we are when we pray. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Acts. Quickly, Acts chapter 28. And we'll read from verse 1 to verse 3 or verse 4 together. Together, one, two, go. Verse 2. Verse 3. Let's stay on verse 3 very quickly and look at it one more time. If you can give us another version, it's fine. And when Paul, all right, Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it in the what? So there was fire before, right? As he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the what? Fastened itself on his hand and then the rest is history. He shook it into the fire and that was it. There was viper inside fire. Viper is death. One sting. Remember what the men said later on. One sting and your history. That deadly thing was inside what we regard as what? Fire. And the secret was simple. He increased the wood on the fire. And the fire increased. And once the fire increased, because of the heat, the viper came out. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, I know you understand what I'm saying. I mean, you're listening to me. You're understanding what I'm saying. But I want you to cross from here to here. Proof that you understand what I'm saying is that you will stop measuring how many hours you pray and just bury yourself in the place of prayer. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You know? Because the kind of wood we have in the fire that we call fire today, especially in the territories that we live in, Abuja, Lagos, Portacot, you know, it's easier in some territories than some others. 
is the reason why it looks as if you're not even a Christian. Because the territory is stronger than you. It's stronger than what you're carrying. And some of us seated here calling ourselves on fire. If you get to some territories, you will know that you're a harlot. I'm not kidding you. You get to some territories, you know that you are a thief. Walk in some places, you will know what is inside you. Because your fire is the one that we can still manage in certain territories. When you get to some places, if you don't step up the heat, you will find out what has been living all this while. Is somebody following? I'm sure what I'm saying is making sense as you're listening. Some of you found out after university that, ah, I don't have fire. Because there was fellowship, everybody was just making noise and shouting and singing. Once you got to NYC, you realized by revelation, there's no fire. Some people finish school and once they entered main church, mainstream church, they realize all of a sudden that there's no fire. Some people got to work. Once they started working, they realized. Now, were they on fire before? Yes or no? Yes or no? no? You're on fire, have you? Yes or no now? And so we all agree that fire is in levels, is in degrees. And the amount of heat your fire is producing determines what can stay and what cannot stay. I'm speaking to people under the sound of my voice who have things that have resisted their fire for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years. Believe me, if you can give it the necessary wood without anybody laying hands, without anybody ministering to you, things will jump out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go into one or two instances, even in my own life personally. And for the sake of those who are writing, the first thing that will get the fire up is prayer. And the second thing that will get the fire up is the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. God describes his words as fire. I'm seeing that sin needs to be judged. And that's why I'm speaking in this direction. There are people under the sound of my voice who are struggling. Who are really, really struggling. And the Lord has come to you with a sure word. And if you will step up the heat, you will not know where the addiction went to. So many WhatsApp messages you know, on how can I stop this thing? How can I stop that thing? How can I? And I've come here to encourage you, all right, as someone who has been there, who has understood the controversy of wanting to love God, but you're finding yourself doing otherwise. I'm telling you, the answer is simple step up the heat. Did you hear what I said? Step up the heat. The more the heat, the more mad what you are burning will look like. Kai. when a thing is consumed I'm not sure you can you can decipher what exactly what burnt all you see is what ashes <laughs> they tell you this was a chair you don't know if it was a chair it was a table or it was a bible we shouldn't be burning our bibles of course but if it was paper it was a textbook all you know is that this is what ashes 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 on the most terrible levels of heat you can't you can't you can't you can't say exactly what burnt here it will burn it until you cannot recognize again what this was that's the kind of fire god is bringing into our lives if they tell people what you were before they will say it's a lie they will swear that it's not possible that this person became this person. But that's what fire does. It changes the state of what it touches. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, this boy standing before you. It was the fire of God that helped this life. Because every manner of humanity you can imagine. That's why the Bible says Elijah was a man of like passion. When you see the results of people you have the tendency to believe that they 
you know, are special or something. God just likes them. You know, God just, we have a way of just excusing things so we can keep ourselves where we are. The truth is they went through a process called fire. And once they went through that process, something else came out of the process. They looked different when they were in the raw state. But once they passed through the process of fire, the refiner's fire brought out a different product entirely. And when you look at that life, you can't imagine that this person one year ago is the person I'm looking at now. Hallelujah. As we began to spend time with God, fellowship with God and His Word, we started to find that many things began to burn out of our hearts. Many intentions, many motives, many things that should not be in the heart of a person who says he's hungry for God on fire began to burn out. I'm paying particular interest to those of us who have actually come before God many, many, many times. And you're wondering why things are not falling off. I want to tell you why. The reason is simple. We are not intentional. We are not intentional. The Bible did not say we should hang around the fire. Until the fire touches you, you will never know that it's possible for change. Breaking of the dam within you as the rivers from your belly flows. Those that wait upon.